My name is Kelly Papham. I'm technical manager for Invino Engineering LLC. We're located in Tampa, Florida. We are a domestic and international engineering firm focused on steam systems. Today I want to talk about eliminating steam system corrosion. Step one, deaerator operation. Deaerator performance, a critical device in the steam system to prevent corrosion of course in the boiler operation, but also in the steam system. The question I have for people, is the deaerator working correctly? Unfortunately, a percentage of deaerators are not meeting performance. And we'll talk about that, specifically testing procedures. Deaerator performance, high quality water required for boiler feed. Of course, non-condensable gases eliminated. Steam quality for the process application. Non-condensable gases going with the steam into the process will suppress the temperature of steam called partial pressures. Deaerator performance is measured in the units, parts per billion. International standard, seven parts per billion. There are two types of deaerators. One is a tray. Agitation is provided by spilling water over stacked plates, or what we call trays. The other one, it, or also steam is injected into the tray section to assist in the deaerator operation. Atomizer or spray is the other type. Condensate makeup water is sprayed through a set of spray nozzle. Steam is injected to help in the process. The first type is the deaerator tray design. Trays assist in the non-condensable gas elimination. Steam enters the tray section. So in this picture here, you have trays located in this section here, and you have steam coming in here to assist in the process. There's a wire level here, or feed water storage for the boiler operation. The other type of deaerator is a spray type deaerator, which can have two types. One is a fixed or the other is a variable orifice design. Again, steam is used to assist in the process of eliminating non-condensable gases. Deaerator operation is scrubbing gas, of course, is steam. It has two actions, preheat the liquid for the boiler operation, increase the water temperature for gas elimination. Non-condensable gas elim elimination can be mechanical separation and diffusion of gas particles to the surrounding atmosphere. All the areas must vent non-condensable gases. The percentage of steam for the operation is vented to ensure the removal of the gases. So in this picture here, this is non-condensable gases or steam being vented with the gases to ensure that we're getting rid of the gases out of the deaerator operation. The major question is what is the correct amount of steam? How much steam should I be venting to ensure that I'm getting rid of the non-condensable gases? The old technology methods of testing the air rate of performance, steam venting, a small plume of steam, 14 to 18 inches. A small plume is good, then a larger volume will be outstanding, correct? Negatives, unnecessary loss of energy, which can be substantial depending on the venting. It has no bearing on the true deer rate of performance. It just says, I'm venting steam. So in this operation here, you can see the steam coming out of the deaerator operation. The question is, is this a graph pile steam, or is this too much steam, or too little steam? We don't know unless we dissolve oxygen in the steam. Another method is sulfite residual. Chemical tests, easy to do on a daily basis and should be done on a daily basis. Negatives, not a true measurement of non-condensable gas elimination. It just tells me I have sulfite residual. 
A deiterator can have sulfide residual, but fail to dissolve oxygen test. I've seen deiterators that have sulfide residual, and when we do the ASME test, they test out at 300 parts per billion. Therefore, we must do the ASME test, which is the ASME standard is PTC 12.3. You have to remove the sulfide for 48 hours prior to testing because we want to measure true deaerator performance, which is seven parts per billion or lower. This should be accomplished every six months. Not a bad test to do, it's not that difficult to do. And some plants do it monthly, but at least do it every six months. That will tell you the deaerator performance. When conducting the dissolved oxygen test, then we can adjust the steam venting based on the dissolved oxygen test. Example, three parts per billion. Then I can reduce the amount of venting. So I'm at three parts per billion, I can reduce the amount of venting. So I don't want to go over five parts per billion, and definitely not over seven parts per billion. But I do not want a energy loss here, unnecessary. If I get a reading of 20 parts per billion, venting should be increased because I know that will help assist in getting rid of the non-condensable gases. The other thing that you can do is adjust the steam pressure. You know, people say, well, the aerator should be operating at 5 PSI. Some people say it should be operating at 8 PSI. Other people say it should be operating at 12 PSI. What is the correct pressure? The correct pressure is I need to get below 7 parts per billion. So I can adjust pressure. I can adjust venting to make sure that I'm going to achieve a correct This barrier test, this was too aggressive, and this venting was reduced. And a, a good amount of energy or dollars was accomplished. The other thing is looking at visual inspection of the spray nozzles or springs and the trays, and even looking at the internal tank uh, system or components to make sure that we do not have oxygen pitting inside the deaerator. But I always like to do this on spray type deaerators or any spray. If I can get in there and get a video. So this is the atomization coming on here with the makeup water and time. Of course I don't have steam going through it because I have the manual open. With this we have a deaerator that is not meeting performance. And you can see that this is not a really great spray. It's just hitting a uh, diffuser plate. And we want to do on spray is to get into the smallest particles available so the water can gain the energy from steam and release the non-condensable gases because of surface area. So I always say visual ins inspection of the spray operation is a really good uh, thing to do on a year basis. Now the other uh, method that we uh, can talk about is online dissolve oxygen testing, which <coughs> is a great, great uh, device to have on the areas. There are several ve vendors and they're very, very accurate and ensures proper operation of the deaerator. So these will give us a measurement here of dissolved oxygen. And this one here is running at 0.1 ppb, which is outstanding. This one here is going through calibration, which is measuring, measuring zero. So another device to help us to uh, make sure that our deaerator is working correctly. But anyway, in Vino Engineering, our approach, short term, steam assessments, steam balance, steam performance, training, long-term upgrades process. If you ever have questions, please contact us at our email address is down here or our website. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.